Hello students, as you know that we are discussing about the lesson biological classification. In this, we have already studied about uh, uh, Kingdom Monera as well as Kingdom Protista. Now, we are discussing about the Kingdom Mycota or Kingdom Fungi. So, as you know that we are discussing about kingdom mycota or kingdom fungi. So, there we have discussed certain general characteristic features like these are achlorophyllous and they are heterotropic in nature. Long, thin, thread-like structure of fungi is known as hyphae. Network of hyphae is known as mycelium. Only unicellular fungus is there, that is yeast. Uh, most of them are got a long, thread-like structure. Uh, or means only one unicellular fungus is yeast, and uh, so this uh, hyphae may be septate or aseptate, may be uninucleated or multinucleated. These all characters we have discussed uh, regarding the general characteristic features of water kingdom mycoma, and uh, we have gone through the classification also. So in that uh, we have discussed about uh, <coughs> phycomycetes. Ascomycetes, Basidiomycetes, Deuteromycetes. Deuteromycetes. These are the uh, what classification of kingdom mycota in which we have already studied about uh, what phycomycetes. Next, uh, we have to discuss about the ascomycetes. Let us start uh, discussion about the ascomycetes. 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 Mycetes. So, here, what kind of organisms come under ascomycetes? What are the characteristic features of ascomycetes? How the reproduction process takes place in ascomycetes? Where they are found? Whether they are unicellular or multicellular? So, what kind of mode of nutrition do we update? About all these things we have to discuss. So, in that, first one, they are multicellular or unicellular. First of all, let me to give you some examples like morals, morals, then buffels, then neurospora, neurospora. These are the examples for examples for what this group of fungi that is ascomycetes. So they may be uh, multicellular. They may be multicellular or unicellular. Multicellular or unicellular. So usually multicellular, as I have told you, they are made up of many cells. And uh, so these are normally saprophytic. These are normally saprophytic. These are normally saprophytic. And uh, they usually feed on uh, what uh, dung that is called as a coprophilus. 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 Coprophilus means which grow on dung. Saprophytic means which grow on dead and decaying substances. And uh, parasite. 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 Parasite means which uh, is depend on other organisms for their food and shelter simultaneously to cause the diseases. So mycelia, mycelia. You know that network of hyphae is known as a mycelium. Hyphae means it is a long, thin, thread-like structure, and this mycelium is branched. Mycelium is a branched and septate. Branched and septate. So, 
in the uh, what introduction class to the kingdom by Porter, I have told you that a uh, long thin thread like structure of fungi is known as hyphae. Network of such hyphae is called as mycelium. But mycelium, in case of water, so this particular uh, members of ascomycetes, it is branched. It is branched like this. And septas are present, septas are present like this. If septas are present, means they are uninucleated, they are not multinucleated, they are uninucleated. Each septa present one water particular nucleus. So the mycelium is branched and septic. And uh, usually the reproduction which takes place by a sexual method, it is by formation of conidia, by formation of conidia. Conidia means a sexually reproducing structures which are growing in conidiophores. Conidiophores. They grow in conidiophores. Conidiophores means the structure in which these are uh, asexually reproducing conidia are produced. Conidia are nothing but the spores. Those spores on germination, what happens? They are released and they go and fall, and some other places there they start germinating. So, and uh, uh, later on, morals, buffers, and neurospora are the examples for water ascomycetes. These morals and buffers are or edible means we can use it as food for example so you know that mushrooms mushrooms which come under kingdom mycota are edible in the same way moral sign buffers which come under kingdom mycota belong to the group ascomycetes these are also edible remember all the mushrooms are not edible so some of the mushrooms are poisonous some of the mushrooms are allergic that means they cause allergy, so that we should remember. That is ascomycetes, ascomycetes. There is one more example in the ascomycetes, members of uh, ascomycetes, which is known as neuroscora, so which are used in uh, what biotechnological work or genetic engineering work. They are used in what biotechnology. So all these are the information concerned to the ascomycetes. So the members of this ascomycetes are normally multicellular and multicellular as well as you know the general characteristic feature of uh, mycota, they are heterotrophic, heterotrophic. Heterotrophic means they depend on other organisms for their food. So heterotrophic may be they are saprophytic, saprophytic means they feed on dead eye decaying substances. Coprophilus means which grow on damp. Coprophilus means they grow on damp. Parasitic means they grow on other organisms and they get water nutrients from the other organisms. So you know that while explaining any members of kingdom mycota, we should explain about mycelium because mycelium is different from one group to other group. So here mycelium is branched and separate. Here we have drawn the diagram of this mycelium. And uh, uh, then later on, what happened? A sexual reproduction takes place by water by formation of conidia. So they are produced in the conidia force. And examples for this uh, particular ascomycetes are morals, buffels, as well as neurospora. Here, morals and buffels are used uh, as a food, they are edible. Neurospora is used in biochemical products. That is the information concerned to the ascomycetes. Later on, so we have to discuss about the basiliomycetes. 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 So, these are other group of uh, kingdom mycota. So, about which we have to discuss the characters of this uh, what basidiomycetes. So, mushrooms, mushrooms, mushrooms are the members of basidiomycetes. Remember, so these mushrooms usually where they grow, you have seen. 
So usually what happens, uh, the dumping places usually where waste materials are present, decaying substances are present, there you have, uh, there you find the growth of such type of mushrooms. Remember, so different types of mushrooms are there, but uh, uh, in that some of them are edible and some of them will be poisonous. It doesn't mean that mushrooms means that all of them are edible. Only few mushrooms are edible. Others are poisonous or cause allergic diseases. So remember, mushrooms are a highly nutritious food which contain all the essential nutrients required for the growth and development of organisms. And usually they grow on soil as well as logs, as well as they are present as a parasite. So some of the uh, water mushrooms are edible. So mode of nutrition they may be parasitic. They may be parasitic, or they may grow on wooden logs, and they are also grow in soil. So that means uh, so the habitat of the members of Pasitium is they may be parasitic, or they may grow on logs, or they may grow in the soil. So these points we should remember because these are found in these cases. Then what happened? So usually, asexual reproduction is not seen in case of what uh, uh, this particular basidium uh, is. Asexual reproduction is not found. You know that uh, Cordelia is a type of asexual reproduction which is seen in. So ascomycetes, this such type of asexual reproduction is not found in this. Then the fusion of uh, what proto protoplast takes place, which is known as plasmogamy. By the method of plas plasmogamy fusion of a water protoplast of two cells takes place, it leads to sexual reproduction. Remember, sexual reproduction takes place by the plasmogamy. You know that in organisms, we can see three types of reproduction, vegetative reproduction, asexual reproduction, as well as sexual reproduction. So in vegetative propagation or vegetative reproduction, so it is also a type of asexual reproduction which is seen in plants. So, asexual uh, reproduction, vegetative reproduction, uh, uh, by the method of uh, fragmentation also takes place. So, here, asexual uh, reproduction is not seen in the members of residue mycetes. Sexual reproduction takes place by plasmogamy. So, here, the members of uh, this residue mycetes are very popular, that is mushrooms. We have seen about the Paxinia, which causes uh, diseases in plants. So, uh, such type of uh, what examples uh, are seen in case of uh, this Paxiniomyces. Paxinia albigo is another example, so which is found in water Paxiniomyces. So, that is about the characteristic features of uh, Paxiniomyces. And the last group of uh, kingdom mycota, last group of the mycota are deuteromycetes, 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 these are called as imperfect fungi, these are called as imperfect fungi, imperfect fungi because in this sexual reproduction is absent, sexual reproduction is absent. So it is absent. A sexual reproduction is not seen in the members of water or uh, this particular uh, um, deuteromycetes. Here, actually, what happens? Uh, this is known as imperfect fungi. So phycomycetes, ascomycetes, basidiomycetes. Uh, there we can see sexual reproduction as well as asexual reproduction. So they obey all the characteristic features of those. Uh, Groups, but here deuteromycetes, which is known as imperfect fungi, if in case if any uh, what sexual method of reproduction is not found, uh, then it is kept in the members of uh, deuteromycetes. If in case uh, again after keeping in that uh, deuteromycetes, if during the course of invention, so investigation or uh, examination, if they find what sexual reproduction again they take out the member from the deuteromycetes and keep it in either phycomycetes, ascomycetes, or basidiomycetes. Here, a sexual reproduction is common, a sexual reproduction is common which takes place by conidia. So, you know that conidia are sexually reproducing structure. So, and mycelium, you know that mycelium means so it is network of hyphae and it is. Branched mycelium is 
branched and uh, branched and septage it is a, a branched and septage septa means uh, water a small uh, small uh, partitions are found on the water mycelium uh, that is septage septate branch and septate for example if it is the hyphae network of hyphae becomes so what mycelium these are found as a uh, water septates septates then usually what happen uh, uh, these are mode of new nutrition may be parasitic or saprophytic parasitic or saprophytic saprophytic parasitic or saprophytic Parasitic or saprophytic means you know that parasites means uh, which depend on other organism for food uh, as well as shelter simultaneously they cause diseases. Saprophytic means which grow on what uh, uh, what uh, uh, dead and decaying substances. Dead and decaying uh, what substances? So examples for these are alternaria, 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 and trichoderma, trichoderma. These are the examples for what? Uh, deuteromycetes. These are the examples for deuteromycetes. In this way, what we can explain. So, we are discussing about the kingdom mycota. In this uh, kingdom mycota, we discussed about phycomycetes, ascomycetes, basidiomycetes, as well as deuteromycetes. After discussion of all these things, we came to know that members of kingdom mycota are erthoropolis. They are heterotrophic. The mode of nutrition may be saprophytic, parasitic, or uh, then coprophilus. So they grow on dead and decaying uh, substances. They grow on logs. That is mode of nutrition. Reproduction is a common uh, what uh, vegetative or sexual as well as sexual reproduction is seen. Then later on, what happens? They usually are useful. These are uh, kingdom mycota, members of kingdom mycota are used in production of uh, antibiotics. They are used uh, in uh, water, uh, obtaining uh, several food materials. As I have told you, mushrooms, morels, and buffels are used as uh, food material. They are rich in nutrients. So that is about the kingdom mycota. That is kingdom mycota. In today's class, uh, we will wind up with the lesson biological classification because uh, we have already studied about the important three important kingdoms. While explaining the what biological classification, I have told you that five kingdoms are there, which are known as Monera, Protista, Microta, Plantae, and Animalia. In these, uh, what five kingdoms? We study about three kingdoms in the lesson biological classification, about which we have already studied. They are Monera, Protista, Mycota. These are the three kingdoms which we are discussing here. So after discussion of this, we should uh, go in uh, what a short uh, about the kingdom, uh, what uh, Plantae as well as uh, Animalia. Remember, so kingdom, kingdom, Plantae, kingdom, Plantae, about which we will discuss in detail, about which we will discuss in detail in the next lesson, that is kingdom, Plantae. That is the third lesson. About kingdom animalia, we study in the fourth lesson in detail their classification. In kingdom plantae, we study about uh, what uh, algae, bryophytes, pteridophytes, gymnosperm, angiosperm, their classification, general characteristic features, example, life cycle, everything we will discuss in the kingdom plantae. Here, we are not going in detail in the lesson biological classification. A short introduction is given to what this kingdom plantae in this lesson. The intention behind giving short introduction to this uh, kingdom plantae is uh, in one lesson that is biological classification, you will get information about complete five lessons, uh, five kingdoms that is Monera, Protista, Mycota, Plantae, as well as Animalia. Now, regarding the kingdom plantae, for example, so the general, in simple, in uh, water, we are not going in detail regarding this kingdom plantae. Few characters we are discussing. The members of kingdom plantae are autotrophic. Autotrophic means they prepare their own food because of presence of green pigment, that is chlorophyll. By utilizing the by utilizing the solar energy, by utilizing the solar energy in presence of raw materials like water and carbon dioxide, they prepare the food material. So water in the chloroplast. So the members of the plant are autotrophic and some of them are heterotrophic. 
for example so uh, what are insectivorous plants insectivorous plants insectivorous plants insectivorous plants means especially venus fly trap or picture plant what we can do the example so usually what happen so these uh, plants are have certain adaptation especially in picture plant so the what uh, the arrangement is like this that petiole including leaf has developed like this uh, and what happens here it contains uh, some liquid uh, so the species liquid insect what they do for the search of food they enter into this when they see from that liquid uh, their legs are held uh, because it is sticky in nature when the one insect enters into it, no? so lead out this uh, water closes and they absorb especially nitrogen from that insect. They absorb nitrogen from that insect. Nitrogen is the source of food material for these insects. Insectivorous plants we call they are autotrophic in nature. So uh, autotrophic in nature, some of them are nitrotrophic, that uh, example insectivorous plants. So simultaneously, we take both mascuta, which is a, a root parasite. It acts as a root parasite. The roots of the scuta plant reach the xylem and phloem of the roots, and from there directly they absorb nutrients as well as water. So later on, so they grow uh, in wide habitat. They are present in water, which are called as hydrophytes. They are present in the deserts, which are known as xerophytes. They are present on the other plants, which are called as epiphytes. They are present in water, which are called as aquatic plants or hydrophytes. The plants may be small, smallest known angiospermic plant is a water olfia microscopica, the smalls, they may be herb, shrub or trees, such type of general characters we can see. So usually in this we study about the water, algae, we study about the bryophytes, we study about the pteridophytes. We study about genosperms, genosperms, we study about angiosperms, we study about angiosperms. In the next lesson, in the next lesson, we will discuss in detail about uh, these uh, concepts, that is algae, bryophytes, teredophytes, genosperms, and angiosperms. And we study about uh, life cycle pattern. Life cycle pattern. Life cycle pattern means alternation of generation. So, uh, sporophytic and gametophytic uh, generations are seen in the kingdom plant. About this, uh, we will discuss. Here, the intention behind explaining kingdom plant in biological classification, they want to complete the information concerned to the five kingdoms. That is regarding information concerned to the kingdom plant. Then one more, then one more kingdom is there, which is known as kingdom animalia. Kingdom animalia. So here also we will see some of the general characteristic features of kingdom animalia. Kingdom animalia. What is this uh, uh, information concerned to the kingdom animalia? You know that uh, they are heterotrophic. Heterotrophic. Heterotrophic means they depend on other organisms for their food material. For example, animals may be herbivorous or carnivorous. Herbivorous means they feed on plants, carnivorous means they feed on animals. In Kingdom Animalia, we will discuss about the phylums. We mainly discuss about the phylums. Around 11 phylums and sub phylums we study. Phylums includes uh, like uh, Oryphera, Cylentrita, Dinophora, Platy Elementis, Aske Elementis, Anelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata, Hemichordata, Chordata, Subphylums, uh, Cephalochordata, then Neurochordata, then in uh, what uh, Chordata we mainly study about. Uh, these uh, mammals, uh, amphibians, reptiles, yews, pisces, uh, so all the characters we discuss in the kingdom, what animalia. These are usually heterotrophic. The members of kingdom animalia are heterotrophic. You know that uh, plant cell, plant cell. I'm explaining you about plant cell, which is made up of water cellulose. 
plants and wall is made up of cellulose. But uh, here in case of kingdom animalia, cell wall is absent. In plant, animal cell, cell wall is absent. They lack cell wall. Instead of that, what happened? Externally, it is covered by what? Plasma membrane. Plant cell. In plant cell. In plant cell, what happened? Uh, cell wall is present. In animal cell, cell wall is absent. So then, these are heterotrophic and these reproduce by sexual as well as a sexual method. In our sexual method, what happens? In lower organism, binary fusion, multiple fusion, or uh, budding, or uh, by formation of uh, many other uh, what methods uh, you can see here in this case, uh, that is uh, uh, what a sexual type of reproduction in case of kingdom anyway. In sexual reproduction, uh, two parents are involved, gamete formation takes place, fusion of male and female gamete takes place, which leads to formation of a zygote. And in sexual reproduction, they use copulatory organs. Copulatory organs. Copulatory organs means which are helpful for uh, release of sperm into the female genital tract. So that is regarding what to in the animalia. So we are not going in detail about these uh, kingdoms because uh, next in the fourth lesson we have to discuss in detail about the kingdom animalia. So try to understand. We have discussed about the what in detail regarding Kingdom Monera, which we have studied about Archibacteria and Eubacteria. Kingdom Protista, we have studied, in which we have studied about Chrysophytes, Dinoflagellates, Euglenoids, Slime Molds, as well as Protozoans. In Kingdom Mycota, we have discussed about the Phycomycetes, Ascomycetes, Basidiomycetes, as well as Deuteromycetes. So after this, uh, we will discuss about the kingdom plantae in which we will discuss about uh, algae, bryophytes, pteridophytes, gymnosperm and angiosperm. In kingdom animalia, we will discuss about the phylums. But remember, so I am explaining you about the five kingdoms which are given by R.H. Vichekar. So in this, uh, one special point is there, that is uh, R.H. Vichekar who framed five kingdoms uh, but uh, fail to keep uh, some of the organisms like uh, viruses, viruses, lichens, lichens, prions, and viroids. So these are the four group of uh, these are the four group of organisms. These are the four different group of organisms that is viruses, lichens, prions, viroids. These are the four different group of organisms which are not studied under any kingdom. About these, we have to discuss in detail. Now, so regarding these, what different group of organisms, viruses, lichens, prions, viroids. So remember, these viruses, lichens, prions, viroids are not kept under any kingdom because they are not obeying the general characteristic features of those five kingdoms. That's why we study them separately. In future, so what happens? These may be kept in other kingdoms. So by framing new kingdom, they may spread new kingdom for separately for them and they may keep them in that. But right now, we study about the five kingdoms, Monera, Protista, Mycota, Plantae, Animalia, viruses, lichens, prions and viroids are not studied under any group of kingdoms because these do not obey the what uh, rules of those five kingdoms. That's why RH Vitaker kept these separately, kept these separately without keeping them under any kingdoms. Now, let us start the discussion about the viruses. You know that viruses are normally infectious. They cause the different types of diseases in plants and animals. These cause These cause diseases in plants and animals. The viruses which cause diseases in plants are called as plant viruses. The viruses which cause uh, diseases in animals are called as animal viruses. So these are these are special. These are special because these are made up of only two components. That is a nucleic acid. 
nucleic acid and protein nucleic acid and protein remember these viruses are made up of only two components their body structure for example in our body we have micromolecules as well as macromolecules so we have proteins vitamins minerals roughages we have cellulase lipase many components are present in our body but in viruses only two components are present that is nucleic acid and protein for example one example we can give here for example bacteriophage so about this sir they have given diagram in your textbook so that is bacteriophage here it contains water dna and above that you will find protein coat this sir protein coat is present on that genetic material dna so here protein is not a genetic material here dna is a genetic material in case of bacteriophage in case of bacteriophage in case of bacteriophage the water dna is the genetic material and above it contains protein coat so the bacto mosaic virus the mato mosaic virus are the other examples for viruses so viruses are classified into two categories based on the genetic material they are dna viruses and rna viruses rna viruses in most of the cases dna will be the genetic material uh, and in some cases rna will be the genetic material so dna genetic material may be dna or rna but never both remember in viruses genetic material either it may be dna or rna but never both so viruses are normally infectious they are normally infectious infectious means uh, they spread from one organism to other organism one person to other person so they get infected so they lead to several different types of diseases for example in case of human beings uh, the latest disease is corona disease and uh, uh, then before that uh, we discussed about uh, so viral fever then aids such type of viral diseases we have discussed so they are highly infectious so these viruses are known as connecting link between living and non living viruses are known as connecting link between living and non living means so they are a what a connecting link between living and non living because when these viruses infect an organism when they enter into the body of the organism they start behaving like a living organism but when they are present outside the organism when they are present in the soil or on any substance sir it behaves like non living so that's why these are known as connecting link between the living and non living so uh, these uh, are what uh, having both the characters for example so if you have viruses you can cut them into small pieces and keep them in a bottle and pack it and seal it up after 10 years if you take out and uh, if you allow those uh, microorganisms those viruses to infect some plant or animals means they will infect so that means that whenever they are present outside the body of the organism they behave like non living when they are present in the body of the organism they behave like a what a living so that means because of this property which behave like living as well as non living they are considered as a connecting link between living and non living and these are a cellular in nature these are a cellular in nature a cellular means the complete or perfect cell is not present you know that two types of cells are there prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell so in eukaryotic cell well developed nucleus is present in prokaryotic cell well developed nucleus is absent so even though that prokaryotic cell is known as cellular in nature because it contains mitochondria golgi complex endoplasmic reticulum in case of eukaryotic cell even though such type of things are absent in prokaryotes they have plasmid they have small ribosome other cell organelles are present in prokaryotes so then also they are called as what cellular in nature 
But uh, viruses are acellular in nature. Acellular in the nature, in the nature means uh, they do not have cell organelles like uh, what uh, mitochondria, Golgi complex, endoplasmic reticulum, lysosomes, ribosomes. Such a type of uh, cell organelles are absent. That's why they are called as acellular. That is uh, the reason why we are not studying what uh, these viruses under any of those uh, five kingdoms. For example, in Monera, you will study about the prokaryotic unicellular organisms, but these viruses do not obey the rules of uh, what uh, this uh, characteristic features of uh, this kingdom Monera. Then in Protista, you will study about uh, eukaryotic unicellular organism. Viruses do not obey the rules of uh, kingdom Protista. In the same way, Mycota, Plantae, as well as Animalia, the characters, general characteristic features are not obeyed by the viruses. Because of this reason, we study them separately. So we are not including them in the any of the kingdoms. So remember, viruses are what are acting as a parasite because different types of diseases. So uh, that uh, viruses means venom. Viruses means venom. That is, they are poisonous. They are poisonous and non-cellular or cellular. You can also call it as what non-cellular. So that is some of the important uh, information concerned to the this particular viruses. So how can we explain regarding viruses? Viruses are connecting link between the living and non-living. So they behave like the living when they are present in the body of the organism, and they behave like non-living when they are present outside the body of the organisms. Then later on, what happens? So they are considered as connecting link between living and non-living. Viruses cause both the diseases in both plants and animals. So they, on the basis of that only we can classify the viruses into uh, what plant viruses as well as animal viruses. Later on, what we can do? We can classify these animal viruses into DNA viruses and RNA viruses. If the genetic material is DNA, then they are called as DNA viruses. If the genetic material is RNA, then they are called as RNA viruses. Remember, genetic material may be DNA or RNA, never both. And uh, examples are like bacteriophages, tobacco mosaic virus, tomato mysoft virus, they can be given as genetic material. So remember, usually there are group of all viruses, bacteriophages, which can kill the bacteria. Remember, that is very important part regarding viruses. These are all the information concerned about the viruses. Then later on, prions. Remember, uh, these prions are very unique. These have only protein. Only protein in their body, but then also these are infectious, they are capable of causing diseases. Such a group of organisms are called as prions. So, what are, in your textbook also they have here not given much information regarding that. So, prions are infectious protein uses molecules. Virons, virons, these are infectious nucleic acids. Infectious nucleic acid means. These are uh, what are capable of causing. So that is, uh, they are called as a virus. So then, another group of interesting organisms, they are lichens. They are lichens. Lichens. Lichens means it is a symbiotic association between algae and fungi. Lichens means it is a symbiotic association between algae and fungi. So, algal component is known as phycobiont, and fungal component is known as a mycobiont. Fungal component is known as mycobiont. The study of algae is known as phycology, the study of fungi is known as mycology. 
phycobiol, which is the water um, algal components in case of lichens or lichens, lichen, so they prepare food material and give it to the fungi. Fungi in turn is helpfully absorbing the nutrients and uh, uh, essential materials and they give it to the algae. In this way, these uh, both uh, what algal component as well as fungal component are what mutually benefited. Such an arrangement is called as uh, what lichens. Remember, these lichens usually grow in pollution free environment. Lichens usually grow in pollution free environment. So these do not grow in polluted environmental conditions. They grow in pollution free environments. So usually what happens? Uh, here, lichens, uh, they are very sensitive to pollution. These usually grow on the tree trunks. These usually grow on the tree trunks uh, and uh, these uh, indicate uh, water pollution. So that is uh, our information concern about the kingdom, my uh, kingdom, uh, what five kingdoms and the remaining uh, water groups of organisms. Here what we have done, we have studied about the Monera, Protista, Mycota, Plantae and Animalia and along with that the other group of organisms like lichens, prions, viroids and viruses we have studied. That is the information concerned about the kingdom, uh, all the five kingdoms as well as uh, other group of organisms that ends your uh, lesson uh, what uh, biological classification. So from tomorrow onwards we start uh, the new lesson that is kingdom planting. Thank you.